She is the host of Sunday with Stoker, 7 o'clock here on Sky News on Sunday nights. Amanda Stoker joins us live now from Brisbane. Good to talk to you again, Amanda. Give us your take on uh, Qantas and whether fast-forwarding the exit of Alan Joyce will be enough or whether the board really has some questions to answer, possibly even heads to roll. In my view, Qantas has a lot of work to do to be able to restore the trust the Australians once had in its national airline. There's been just too many things going wrong of late for Alan Joyce not to wear some of that responsibility, but it's going to take an awfully long time, I think, to turn this around, so it's going to end up falling to Ms Hudson as well. Yeah, it sure is, and the board's got to be uh, focused on that. There's news uh, today that a parliamentary inquiry, a Senate inquiry, will be calling executives from, uh, from Qantas and also from Qatar Airlines to answer questions from politicians about who they lobbied and when and where and how these decisions were made. That's going to be pretty fascinating, isn't it? Look, it is going to be pretty interesting, but given that Minister Catherine King has been so evasive in the answers that she provided to Parliament over the last few days, really doing everything but be plain with the Parliament about whether or not she even spoke to Mr Joyce or any other Qantas people about the Qatar decision that had to be made and whether or not um, Qantas had a view and whether or not that was going to amount to anything of a quid pro quo or a tit for tat or a sweetheart deal, depending on how you want to characterise it, where Qantas agreed to um, provide certain support for the government? Did they offer to be um, bold and supportive of the Yes campaign as something of a trade-off for um, a favourable and somewhat protectionist decision in relation to Qatar? We don't know the answer to that question because the minister hasn't been transparent and because these people haven't yet, uh, from the Qantas end, put a version out in the public space that would answer the matter fully and frankly. So the Senate committee's got an important role here and I notice that Labor are doing all that they can to obfuscate and um, muddy the waters by trying to change the terms of reference of that committee. It does suggest there is something to see here. If there was no matter of concern, why not just be upfront? Show up, tell the truth and it's done and dusted. Yeah, it must be a lot of fun sitting on those Senate committees and uh, grilling people, trying to get to the facts. I'm often envious of that job when the senators are in the chair. Speaking of Senate inquiries, there's another one might have a look at this bloke. Let's see what he had to say today on the cost of living. We understand these are difficult times. We know the pressure on household budgets. But while the Liberals Order, engage the in paddling around their pool of shallow politics, what the citizens of this nation know is that in Order, the Albanese the Labor government, they have a government which is concluded. working for us. There you go. He's having his day as Acting Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, Richard Miles. But he's going to have to front up and answer questions about the VIP flights that he's authorised and the ones he's taken himself. Now, we know these planes are... They're kept and staffed and fuelled and run by the Air Force for this very purpose. But you've got to be careful about how you use them. And there's a lot of indication here that uh, he's been pretty free and easy, right? It does seem as though they've got a little bit overexcited about the privilege that is the ability to use these services. You're absolutely right, Chris. Both sides of government, um, or both sides of uh, politics in their time in government have the opportunity to use these planes. Um, they are very nice, they are very convenient, they are also very expensive to the taxpayer and so you've got to have a good um, cost-benefit analysis to justify the use of them. The biggest problem with Mr Miles's position, despite his claim that this is just shallow and petty politics, notwithstanding that they did an awful lot of this um, during their time in opposition Indeed. to great effect. Yeah. The, the, real, the real issue is that he hasn't been transparent about it. Absolutely. Whereas under the coalition government, these matters were always reported. Their value was placed up front before the taxpayer um, in the absolute usual way. Labor's changed the rules. They're no longer disclosing the stuff in the usual way. And we have to ask why the change. For a government that promised sunlight and transparency, 
we aren't seeing an awful lot of it. Spot on, Amanda. Spot on. We need to know all the details. Thanks for joining us. Amanda Stoker there. Catch her again uh, Sunday with Stoker, 7 o'clock on Sunday night. I used to have to go to the Defence Minister when I was running the Foreign Minister's office and ask for those plane allocations. And they were pretty diligent about whether or not you needed it, whether there was a commercial option. It's the way it should be. And then put it all out publicly.